Hey everyone, hi, I'm Saurav. Uh, as Pedro already introduced me, I am uh, one of the founders and CTO of Tricarbonara. Uh, yeah, we are still playing with the name here and wanted to make it fun. So today I'll be talking about how we measured Solana's entire network's carbon emission uh, in real time. So before I start, I'd like to set up a primer here that some of us may have experienced this, that despite all the work we do, and blockchain able to help solve so many problems like Web3, decentralized finance, storage, supply chain, and more, we always get hit with this question that doesn't blockchain consume too much energy? And, you know, the part of the challenge with using famous words from Sherlock Holmes, it's, it's a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. And, uh, you know, I would like to share some of the comments which I have seen personally from the platform called XNow, which is like, you know, the paradox of decentralized currency, claims to the future, but energy consumption tells a different story. Uh, crypto is revolutionary, but it comes with an environmental tag, and, you know, more and more of that. What we found out, and you know, working with Solana Foundation and Tricarbonara, we wanted to address this theory, and we started with a very simple question that, can you, you know, accurately measure the carbon footprint of a blockchain in a real time? And mind it, real time is the key piece of it. Uh, because, for example, one node which is running right now in Iceland will be completely different from the carbon footprint point of view from one running in Singapore. And as in the world of the carbon emission, we always love to say that follow the sun. That means like there is solar, there is green energy, so it's better. But the limitation of this planet is we just have one sun. And the sun cannot be there at every place. It can be just at a certain place at a certain period of time. Uh, of course, it brings other topics like, you know, curtail energy and how we can optimize that, but I don't want to get into that part of it yet. Uh, but yeah, like, so we wanted to start simple and wanted to start with this simple question. What we found at the end of the day is like the carbon emission or the energy consumption of compute is what you know, uh, contributes mostly to the entire network's emission. And to answer that question, uh, you know, we wanted to build a tool, and that's why we came up with this platform called Tri Tricarbonara, and solanaclimate.com is in action, like Tricarbonara in action, which you all might have seen in today's main stage keynote as well. So this, uh, you know, if you go to, uh, I would encourage everyone to go to solanaclimate.com, but not now, maybe after a talk. So this tells you the entire network's carbon emission, which not only, like, not just for the variator nodes, but also for the RPC nodes. It gives you the summary of, uh, I think this is specific for a year time range which we have on the screen. Uh, so it gives you the summary of the whole energy consumption, carbon emission, and if I could scroll down, it would give you more insight uh, with more visualization and everything. But my favorite part is, of course, where we see that each transaction of Solana takes less energy than a Google search. You know, and, and I love that fact. And if, and this is the kind of data which Sherlock Holmes would have used to deduce that if blockchain uses too much energy. And the answer is, it does not. So, we saw the result. Now let me tell you more in detail about how we did it. So this is Tricarbonara. It's a platform, and you can think of this as a very uh, easy to use developer tooling. Uh, we are automated. The beauty of what we did is like we converted the whole carbon emission, carbon science into a technical developer problem. So we leverage underlying machines telemetry data. It's plug and play. It's built by developers for the developers. And it's easy to use. It's, the interface is like an API service which you can integrate with your systems. And last but not the least, which is most important, it is cloud agnostic. Uh, and yeah, that, that's how we were able to integrate with the Solana's uh, decentralized entire network and able to provide the results. So uh, now, okay, too many notes makes you confused. <laughs> so 
let me go into the carbon methodology, uh, methodology part of it. So one beauty of Tricarbonara's platform is it kind of abstracts away the climate science part of it. You don't have to be a climate science expert to be able to you know, utilize or leverage our platform. But I still want to go through some of the details so that you guys have an insight about how we are doing this. So this is the Carbonara's methodology, and we picked up a crypto uh, climate accord methodology to make sure that we are, you know, from the regulation points of view, we are doing what is a standard guidelines out there. And what it says is that the carbon emission uh, or carbon footprint of a software is a function of the electricity usage of uh, you know, uh, the resources the machine is using and the embodied emissions part of it. And electricity there is a function of compute, storage, network, memory, which is simple physics, which is the building blocks of you know, how energy works. Embodied emissions. If you remember today in the you know, main stage keynote, even uh, Anatoly, he's talked about how many transistors, you know, the transition between how many transistors do we have, like billions or millions of transistors in a single chip nowadays. So that's what makes the difference. Embodied emissions is the manufacturing, transportation, and the end of life, how much carbon emission was spent in doing all this. And it completely differs from hardware to hardware. And that's what we also attribute to make that calculation. Now, emission is a function of the electricity, the energy usage, plus coupled with the grid mix. And when I say the grid mix, it is the intensity, like the grid intensity, which tells that how many pounds of megawatt hour is created in the local grid. And that's what uh, contributes to give you two kinds of emissions. We can go with the average and location emissions, which is used usually for reporting your carbon emission and footprint. And there is another uh, uh, kind of emission, which is the consequential and the marginal emission. And the interesting part of that is like, uh, the consequential emission talks about if your activity was not happening on the grid, what would have happened otherwise? So in other words, it's kind of, what is the in incremental impact of your usage on the local grid? So, you know, considering nowadays all the regulations which are coming up, for example, CSRD, MICA, and of course, you know, more upcoming regulation across the globe, we wanted to encourage this community to start looking into the sustainability of their infrastructure. And uh, other than us sharing our own knowledge, if you, some of you are already doing this already and thinking about sustainability, kudos to you. Uh, but this is our, you know, we want to share what we learned from our journey and what we learned from, you know, how do we measure carbon emission of this network. So there are some do's and don'ts which I want to, to talk about. One of the do's is, like, as I mentioned, like the grid intensity and the real-time nature of the grid intensity, uh, grid in intensity makes a difference because what we have realized is, like, even the grid intensity it changes across span of hours and days. So using an annual aggregate instead of using real time actually makes a huge difference. And we have noticed that uh, it can kind of affects the accuracy of the final measurement what you come, come with. Using the right data source is also very important. For example, we were able to integrate with the validators and RPC nodes directly and we were able to get their actual usage utilization metrics to make the calculation, instead of going with any ballpark numbers with any lab test machines. Last but not the least there is the emission coverage. We want to make sure that everyone understands the effect of embodied emissions, as I've mentioned before. Because in the calculation, um, you know, I would love to share all the details there, but uh, you know, on a very high level, it uh, em using embodied emissions as compared to not makes a lot of difference in the calculation. Because sometimes your yeah, usage might be low, but you have to make sure that you also attribute and you do the correct attribution of the embodied emission part of it as well. Because that's what also is the carbon emission which has to be attribu attributed by the consumer there. Now, finally, you know, what makes us more confident and, you know, encourages us uh, and what does it mean for the community is very well, uh, you know, 
in, from this too, it is very well summarized by uh, Papi Chulo Grimm here, is like, detractors love to point out to the energy of inefficiency of the blockchain, um, and Solana is a leading example of low environmental impact, and this solanaclimate.com, this is much more accessible and robust. As I said, like, when you have the data in front of you, you can break or make the claims. Uh, so that said, uh, another important point is like we have to consider this from the regenerative economy point of view as well. As regenerative economy, it aims for uh, renewing, uh, revitalizing its source energy and materials. So environmental factors and sustainability are the you know, fundamentals of, these, you know, of the building blocks of any uh, regenerative economy. And so in, in essence, it's kind of a profound shift from an extractive economy model towards something which is inherently sustainable and uh, res restorative. That said, uh, so this was kind of the TLDR of what is Solana, uh, solanaclimate.com in action. Uh, but huge credit to Solana Foundation to be a thought leader and for their leadership and working with Tricarbonara to you know, go ahead and solve this problem. And I'll again you know, encourage this community that this is the right time to start thinking of sustainability for your IT infrastructure. Uh, and I am again Saurav Sarkar. CTO of Tricarbonara. So please feel free to contact us if you want to reach us uh, online or I'll be around. So come and say hello. Thank you so much.